Well, we are going to start recording. And what I'm going to do in practice number three is something important. You need to remember that our studies are related to two things, basically. I'm going to highlight some important things. Don't worry, I'm going to upload this later when I come back to my office, the, his slides. The idea is that we need to, everything is related to two things, customer experience and customer journey map. This is what we are going to do in the semester, what we are doing in the semester. Carlos Mora came to the class and he explained interesting things. And I'm going to talk about some of them here. This is like where last year, they are slightly different. But I'm going to stop in a couple of, of uh, slides that I think are important. Let me see. All of them, perfect. So I'm going to stop in this slide that is important. Customer experience. To, um, the, the, regarding the first element, customer experience, when we are talking about customer experience, we need to think about what we are doing, the company, the company we are working for or about. In this case, this, this slide is very important because uh, it's a, it comes from, um, from a book of, from Carlos Alcaide that is um, focused on analyzing customer experience regarding services. And there are five elements or five factors. First, second, third, fourth, and five factors. That in general conditions um, customer experience. I'm going to give you some examples. What you need to do in this practice, I'm going to show you later, is to identify these five elements in your company, in your service. I mean, for instance, the first one is space environment or spatial environments or physical environment. When we talk about physical environment, we consider that uh, the, the location, the physical place where the service is given, it's important. And I'm sure you agree with me that if you go to a hotel or a restaurant, it's better if the restaurant is um, um, has an, enough natural light, the furniture is new, the decoration is, is uh, uh, comfortable, or the furniture is comfortable, the decoration is um, nice. This is going to give you, or is going to generate a better customer experience than the contrary. So space environments are important. The same happens, for example, if you go to a, to a thematic park and it's easy to park, there is enough parking space, you don't need to park and walk 20 minutes, or if when you are going to, um, for example, eat, there are enough restaurants and the quality of the food or whatever, despite mm -hmm. the space, the spatial or the space environment. This is the first factor. So taking into account your company, how would you consider this? In your study. It's going to be different. Some of you are working on Boeing. The space environment of Boeing, what is? Of a company, airline company. The airplane, mainly the airplane. If it's comfortable, the leg room, the space, the um, if the um, planes are new or are old, the, the uh, aircraft configuration, you know that there are differences. The low cost companies tend to have more seats, so the space is smaller and so space environment. The staff, the staff is also very important when we are trying to analyze customer experience. Why? Because we are dealing with people. If you go to a restaurant and food is good, the place is nice, but the person that is that comes to your table to uh, make the order or to pay or to bring, the, to, to take the dishes is not educated uh, or any other kind of thing. So uh, maybe you are not, or your customer experience is not that good as it could be. The staff, what the staff do is also important. The personal. 
The process is also, also very important. And when we talk about processes, we, we mainly talk about uh, waiting time. For example, if you go to a thematic park, it's not very nice, you arrive very early in the morning, you park, and you have to spend one hour to go in. Because the ticketing is very, uh, very this process, the, the process of ticketing is not efficient. The same happened in a restaurant. The, one of the worst things that you can have in a restaurant, that you can come to, you, you go to a restaurant, you have a book at one hour, a specific hour, you go to a restaurant, they sit you on the table, and no one comes to see you. You are waiting five minutes, 10 minutes, no one can, or even to order the drinks. This is important. And uh, industrial engineers work on this kind of processes. People from management as well. So processes are also very important. A lot of people in your inter in dev interview are going to say, well, the service is good, but I have to wait too much for this or for that. This is process. The benefits or the profits that you can have not just the profit, the, 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 the profit or the benefit, the direct profit or benefit, but the uh, augmented ones. For instance, mm. if you go to a good restaurant, sometimes not just the service you receive in the restaurant, but also other benefits for you. For example, these kind of people that go to a restaurant, take a picture and put them in uh, Instagram. It's, give, it's giving you something else apart from just Benefits. There are many definitions. And also the physical evidence. The physical evidence, not just the physical evidence in the place, in the location, because the things related to the location, the locations are related to the space environment. When we talk about physical evidence, for example, this is uh, 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 not well translated. Physical evidence means, for example, uh, imagine we go to the website before we go into that that company, we go to the website. We try to see what is the what kind of uh, products they offer, what are the what is the price list, and so on. We not cannot find this information. This is negative in terms of customer experience. Also, for example, if we arrive to a restaurant, it's quite common in Spain at least, and there they have a menu, a short menu of ten dishes, and but they have many other dishes. And when, the, when you want to order, they say, okay, we have this, but we also have this, 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 and that. Dessert, there's no dessert in the menu, but we have this, 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 this. There's no list. Even if you are a Spanish speaker, it's a problem because you only remember the first two and the last two. The rest is like, so the physical evidence is important. And there are many ways to, trans to translate this physical evidence, these general factors into a specific companies, or I'm going to give you examples later. Apart from that, uh, the second element we are going to work, or we are working in this, in this subject is the customer journey map. The customer journey map. In this practice, as I told you, I want you to explain for your company. Of course. The customer experience factors. How would you translate these general factors into a specific ones? And the second one, I want you to uh, draw a customer journey map. Of course, draw and explain. And this is difficult and easy, both. Why? To create a customer journey map, well, there are Hundreds of types of customer journey map. You see, uh, if you ask me, which uh, which you you prefer? Because I have uh, visited different websites, and there are many ways to do a customer journey map. Any customer journey map is okay, as long as it's adapted to your service, to your company. And there are basic things that should be there, and there are other things that are less important. For example, when, we, when I talk about customer journey map, I need some. The first thing, the customer journey map is basically different steps you follow when you interact with a company. I mean, thematic park, for example, 
The first thing I do, I want to go to automatic park. I don't know which. So the first thing I do, online, Alicante. Automatic parks next to me, Valencia, whatever. Terra Mítica, there are some. So this is the awareness, the consideration section. These activities you do before, going to the website, looking for information, mailing them, for example. If it's not a thematic park, for example, but it's a restaurant, and I have a problem uh, because I cannot eat gluten, for example. I mail them. Do you have a, an alternative uh, menu for gluten-free people? Yes, no, whatever. These, these things that happened before are different stages of things that you do before interactions of the individual before going to the place. Afterwards, there are going to be some related to the theory. Theory. If we are talking about, for example, a thematic part, I would at least consider the attractions, to ask about the attractions, because it's the main or the core business of a thematic park, attractions, but also other things that are inside the thematic park and can increase the customer experience or decrease it. For example, the food. If you go to Terra Mítica, you are going to spend the whole day there. So you are going to enjoy the, the, the attraction, but you are going to also eat something or whatever. What about these? So there are going to be different things to assess, different interactions. And finally, the last thing is the after going to the park or after going to the restaurant or going to the hotel or whatever. So before, during and after. Any customer journey map must have some activities before, some during, some after. How many? It depends on your... For instance, if we are talking about a low, uh, a low cost hotel, this kind of hotels that have no services, Sometimes when I travel, I find this just the room. And if you want to have a coffee, there is a machine. So in this uh, kind of uh, uh, hotel, the customer journey map is very small, very short. But if we go to a five-star hotel with a spa, with whatever, with many services, there are going to be more activities to assess. So the first thing we have apart from that is the customer activity. What people do, so at the beginning, customer activity. What the client do in each of the steps? In the first one, call whatever, first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, whatever. What people do? They look online for information or whatever. They send a mail, customer activities. The second one is the um, interactions or the, well, in this example, they say customer goals, it's okay. But the touch points or the interactions. That means when the individual send a mail, there is a touch point there because they, they are sending us a mail or they are posting something on Twitter with the app asking for something, and we need to react to that. They, if they come to my uh, restaurant and they arrive at the restaurant, this is the activity, the client activity, and our response is to welcome them and seat them. In the second step, we need to ask for the drinks and so on. So touch points. In any touch point, there could be, or any touch point is potentially a generator of a good customer experience or a bad customer experience. And there are other, um, other elements. In some cases, we measure some satisfaction or a, a, a some KPI. This second part is secondary. I mean, from a qualitative point of view, of view, we are working in qualitative marketing research. We are more focused on this part. Of course, we can ask in the interview, from one to 10, how do you assess this? 
for example. And they can say, okay, about the information I find in the website, a seven, a six, whatever, a 10, a two, whatever. But this is a quantitative part that could appear or not. It's no problem. Um, here we have, we can see, well, I can, we can see a couple of examples of Here we have another one, mapping the hotel guest journey. And as you see, they say, inspiration and research, booking, pre-arrival planning. So as you see, for example, in this example, these three steps are before. Check in, stay, check out. These three are during and review and post stay. Are up, is after. And we have the same the stage, the stage. And they say here, for example, motivations of individuals, what individuals do, or what individuals are looking for. Touch points. For example, word of mouth, whatever. For example, check in. And they say, uh, motivations of individual, ease of access, what people or the touch points, what are important, the ease of access, the uh, timely check in, room conditions, hotel staff, whatever. And of course, some actions. But there are many ways to do this. There's no uh, uh, universal way. There's no universal way. We could see many examples customer journey map. Here we have another one, it's in Spanish, but it's quite clear. They say, actions of the users, book their room, arrive to the hotel, whatever. As you see before, during and after. In this case, for example, the check-in, they consider the check-in there is like before, from my point of view, the check-in is <clears throat> during, because it's the day, the day. These are before, during, after. We have the touch points, and we have, in this case, instead of giving from one to 10, the satisfaction, they assess in a different way. Well, or they say, okay, below five is, uh, Negative, about five is positive, I don't know. There are many ways to create customer journey, customer journey maps. It's not the satisfaction of the business. We are not interested in the satisfaction of the business. We are talking about the satisfaction with the stage, the specific stage. I mean, if, if in this one we are talking about the website, website, the information available in the website, for example. Customer activity, looking for information of the hotel in the website. So we can ask them, we can ask in the interview. Okay, regarding this step, this stage, the information you found, how do you found it? From one to 10, from one to five. And they can give you a number and you can put the number. But in the customer journey map, in the technical customer journey map, the, what, we, what we need to put is the, the range from one to 10, okay? Whenever we finish and we have gathered uh, two in the interviews and um, one focus group, we are going to have number and we can put the number here. The average number or the average satisfaction regarding the first stage is seven. The average in the, in the second is two. Okay, uh, how can you create customer journey maps? Because I'm sure you, you, you are wondering, oh, well, this is too complex, this is too difficult. There are a lot of websites where they have 
templates, different templates. So you can go to different website, just clicking customer journey map template free, and you can download it. And you need to fill with the information of your company. Apart from that, you can find examples. I told you to do so, but in practice number zero, and almost any group did it. If I'm doing a customer journey map of a hotel, the best way is to go to Google and say, customer journey map, hotel examples. So they download three or four or five and work with this information. Customer journey map, thematic park, download them and whatever. Customer journey map, airlines, download them and use them. Okay, so what I wanted to do uh, in this uh, practice that is going to be a, a short one, like, like a, summary, a summary one, is the following. In theory, you, see, you should do some of the things I'm going to explain today in practice number zero, because you should, at that time, uh, and understand what customer experience means, and specifically also for the for your service. And in this case, we are going to put everything in one document. I mean, in the second part, the order doesn't matter. Explain the difference between customer experience and satisfaction. Customer experience is qualitative. Satisfaction is quantitative. Satisfaction is different than customer experience. Satisfaction basically is and you are going to understand why this, this is like that. Usually satisfaction is made, measured by these confirming expectancies. It seems complex, but I'm going to do it easy. If you go to the cinema and you have a lot of friends that have said, this movie is great. You are going to, it's, it's, it's amazing. Your expectancies regarding this movie is like this. It's a nine. You go to the movies, you watch the movies and you say, was not that good. So this is satisfaction. The difference between your expectancies and the performance. It's a quantitative thing. In customer experience, we, we, we don't want to quantify if you like it or not. What we want to know is why. In, in this subject, what we want to, want to understand is why people have a better experience than other people. What a specific element. Not the number. We don't care about if it's a 10 or if it's a 2. What we want to know are the reasons. Why? Can you follow me? This is why it's so important to manage expectations if we talk about satisfaction. Why? Because if your expectations are too high, it's difficult you are satisfied. This is the reason why some people are never satisfied because their expectations are usually too high. So my recommendation is that you keep expectations always in the middle. So as long as you do something, it's enough. But customer experience, what I wanted to do is to explain that table I showed you two minutes ago with your own words regarding your own study, this slide. So to explain, Face environment, staff, processes, and the physical test or physical evidence regarding your uh, company, your service. And the second thing I want you to do is to create a customer journeyman. How? The first thing is a recommendation look for other customer journey maps online regarding your service. Four or five. Download them. Read them and take whatever you think is useful for your case or not. Afterwards, you log into one of these pages that have templates and use that some of these templates because they are nice, visually nice. You don't need to spend time doing these kind of nice things. Okay? Yes. So this is practice three. And this is like the last thing we are going to ask or we are going to talk about in control number one. So control number one is going to be, well, I'm going to stop recording because this is 